Welcome to SCAL 6, My Favorite Things, Part 3, Print and Cut. If you are unfamiliar with this application, it involves sending a design from the software, your cuts a lot in this case, to a printer along with a set of registration marks. And then when you put the printout into the cutter, the cutter will cut out the shapes that you want. The same process also has different names depending on what world you're coming from. It can be called print and cut. It can be called print then cut. It can be called print plus cut, and it can even be called contour cutting. This process has been around for several decades, but the technology has been greatly improved over the years. And Sir Cuts a Lot 5, especially when it was introduced, came out with some functionality that wasn't available in earlier versions. And this is all part of the reason why I have so many favorite things related to the print and cut process. So the first of my favorite things with regards to print and cut is how the style panel is used to handle what gets printed and what gets cut. And I, a lot of people are very resistant to this initially, and I was too. The first time I, you know, was working with with shirt cuts a lot, I thought, well, this is kind of strange. But this is one of the things that once you get used to doing this, you can't stand not to have it anymore. At least I can. When I go back to other programs provide support, I'm like, oh, I really want this style panel method of controlling, you know, what gets printed, what gets cut. So basically, the way it works is um, I have set uh, all of these layers to uh, just to the default uh, setting on the style panel of cut. And if I go to the preview and then I turn off uh, show printable, you can see that this is everything that's going to get cut. And this is not what I want in this particular case because I've decided, well, you know what? I don't, you know, first of all, I don't want this interior stuff to cut. I want it to just to print. And then when I look at show printable, um, it's going to also print this outside circle, you know, and, and cut it. And I don't want that. I want it just to be a cut line. So it's, you know, uh, very, um, easy thing to do here. You have the different layers here. So I select this first one, which is the outside circle. And again, it's set to cut, but I don't want that to print. I don't want the outside line to print. Now I could turn off the stroke color over here. I could just change the stroke color to none, but then it's handier to be able to see it you know, on the screen, especially if I start making duplicates and, you know, make sure nothing, you know, overlaps or whatever. Um, I can change this to print plus cut, cut only. <clears throat> and what that means is that for a print and cut project, this layer is going to cut only. It will not be printed. So that's what I want for that layer. And then the Be Merry, this is one that I don't want it to cut. I want it to only print. So I change it to print plus cut, print only. So just you know, read what it says. You know, It says for a print and cut. It doesn't have to be a print and cut project. Nobody's forcing you to make it a print and cut project. All it's saying is that this layer will only be set to print. Okay. And then finally, when we come down to the group for the uh, the the image I imported, um, it is currently set to cut and I don't want it to cut. So I want it to also print. So I can set it to print plus cut print only. Or, and of course this one automatically because it's a raster image is set to print plus cut. Or I could have just, you know, selected the group here and set it to print plus cut print only. But now then when I go to the preview window and I turn off show printable, that's all that's going to cut is just the cut line, which is, of course is what I want. And then for the printable, I can turn off the cut lines and for printable, this shows what's going to print. And by the way, you'll notice this came up the other day. Someone asked me about the fact that they didn't see the color in the lettering anymore. That's just how it displays in this particular print uh, window. If you want to see exactly what's going to print, you know, including, you know, like say, let's say you've got your registration marks here or whatever. If you want to be able to see exactly what's going to print, look in your own printer properties. Most printers have an option called, you know, show print preview or show preview. And I really recommend that, especially if you're printing onto an expensive material, make sure you, um, you know, have that set so you can verify you're going to get what you want. Um, alternatively, if you don't have that, then Print your project onto copy paper. Copy paper is inexpensive, and it's a way to verify that you're going to get what you want as well. Now, let's say, now this is something else I like about the style panel, is that these are not, once you set any of these, you can always come back and change them. So, for example, let's say that I change my mind about this circle here, and let's say I want it to have a fill color. And I want that fill color to print. So let's say I select it to be, um, here's one I did, I did a custom color I did that's kind of golden color. And then, of course, over here on my layers panel, I'm going to drag this all the way to the bottom so that now I can see my image. So now then, well, the way it's set up right now, right, this circle is still set to print plus cut, cut only. But all I have to do is just change it back to cut. And so now then, it will both print and it will cut. 
Okay, so uh, keep that in mind also that, you know, this is this is another thing I, I you know like to be other style panel is anything I assign, anything I do is not permanent. I can save the file, reopen, and go back and change things if I want to. So very good feature. So my next favorite thing is the shadow window in uh, Shortcuts A Lot. So I've imported this, uh, this horse image. It's a PNG with a transparent background. And let's say I want to have um, a white border around it, you know, for the cut line. And then I want, in, I, don't want, and I want that to be a kiss cut line. And then I want a larger contour around it. Well, the effects window, the shadow window, let me show you how it works um, in this software. It's really cool. So when you go to effects, shadow layer. Where is it? Here it is right here. Okay. I can create two shadows at one time, which can be really pretty cool. So the way to do that is um, I can come over here and select two so that I have two shadows. And then, you know, the, the color doesn't matter because I'm going to turn on print plus cut outline. Now I still see the color, but when you turn on print plus cut outline, it assumes that you're just doing outline cuts that the, you know, it's not, you're not, you're not wanting to print those particular cut lines, which in this case I don't. You can also, if you had any interior shapes showing up, you could mark blackout shadow and those would automatically be removed, those interior cuts. So you just end up with one cut around the outside. And then you can also set uh, the type of shadow. Like if you, you notice there's a lot of kind of a pointy parts to it and you don't want those, they're kind of sticking out too far. You can go to shadow rounded is all, uh, also, which is a very common thing to do when you're doing uh, stickers. So then you can make this, you know, the size, whatever you want. And of course you can always come in here and say, well, that's, you know, I want it somewhere in between, let's say 0 0.12. All right. The other thing, which is interesting, so you might want a certain amount of white, and I can go ahead and make this white so I can kind of get a sense for, you know, what it's going to look like. So I've got this white that's here. Now then, the one, the, the full cut, the what they call the perf cut on the outside, I don't have to make that the exact same size. I can make it larger or smaller. So I can bring this down so that, you know, I could fit in more stickers, presumably, and, um, you know, just kind of make that just a little bit more further out than the the actual kiss cut so um and then whenever you're happy with you know the, what the way it looks then you just click on okay and now then you can see how that shadow layer um how there's you know two of the shadow layers here and there's also they're not filled with color also the the assignments um, i should have shown you before we started that this original cut line which is the one that goes right around the shape because i had selected that print plus cut outline it has now changed that original cut line to print only so that it won't cut because otherwise you would end up you'd have three cut lines you'd have the cut line around the original image you'd have and and then the, the two shadow layers that you added. Now then down here under the shadow layer, when we select that, now then on the, the, uh, the panel, now this is not true of all cutters, but for certainly the camera cutters, you have this option for the smaller shape, or well, for any shape, but in this case, for this shape, I want it to score because I want to set it to a different cutting force. So I set it to score and a score layer also won't print. What it will do instead is in the cut settings window, when you go to the cut settings window, you will see that you have a score force that you can set lower than your other force, which is like your full cut force or your perf force. Okay, so and then the, this last one then is set to print plus cut, cut only. So that's what I want when I come in here and I look at what I have here. I turn off show printable and I have um, and I can turn on the show score lines. You can see the green is the, the kiss cut force, you know, line that will be cut. And then the red one is the uh, the full perf cut that's going to cut and I can turn on show printable and then this is going to be what prints. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's how, what I like about the, the shadow window. My next favorite thing is what I call registration mark freedom. Sure cuts a lot offers more capability with the, with respect to the registration marks than any other program that I've worked with. And let me show you what I mean by that. If you go to cutter, cutter settings. Now you always have to remember that some of these things works for some cutters and not for others. It all depends on the brand and model. Some of the older cutters cannot take advantage of some of these things. The newer ones with the camera, they take advantage of all of these things. So up here under registration marks for this particular cutter, you'll notice I've got mark size, mark thickness, 
and then one called mark and set from print bounds and then a setting here which is a distance setting so the mark size you know again that depends on the brand and model of cutter <clears throat> the camera cutters can have them quite small so i tend to use 0 0.25 inches if i'm in uh, metric then i'd use um half a centimeter point or five millimeters uh, mark thickness now this is the biggest you can have the registration marks set based on around the design and of course you know that what happens is the reg mark will be based on like if you had a bounding box around this entire project the registration mark would be some distance away from that well that can run into problems because you'll end up you'll be like within inside the printer margin area and so then you're going to get that pop-up message that it can't print the registration marks but you have these other options one is from print bounds or page bounds <clears throat> page bounds would be based on whatever this mat size is set to. So if it was 12 by 12, it would be based on a distance from 12 by 12. But And that's one of the reasons why I tend to always set my mat size to match the printout document, like, <clears throat> for example, letter size, so that I don't have to worry about that. The other one is mark and set from print bounds, which is also a good way to go, because then it's not going to put them beyond the borders of whatever your printer properties are set to, whatever those margins are it is set for the for that particular print printer. So like for example, Canon printers, if they have a, a larger allowance at the bottom or limit at the bottom compared to the top uh, on an Epson, and I'll show you in a second, it's, it's, it's gonna be the same all the way around. But anyway, so like Mark and Zip from Print Bounds, which is one of the ones I tend to use. When I come over and I turn on show print margin, show reg marks, now then you can see where the reg marks are located. Now you may think if you're you know used to another program, you're like, well, Sandy, you're gonna run into problems here because you can tell, for example, the the print out the, the dragon's tail here extends to the left of the reg mark. Well, no problem. That That's not an issue. You can do that. There's no warning. There's no like, uh-oh, he's outside. That's not a problem. It can be like this image, the dragon's uh, horns here are higher above the reg mark boundary and to the left of it, okay, and a little bit to the right of it. That's perfectly fine. You do have to watch out for, however, that you don't want any of your printable area to be outside the boundaries of your print margins, which is what this dotted line is. That's what my current printer settings are. And that's something else, you, you know, something you always need to do for a print and cut. Always go to file print setup, or if you're on a Mac, it's called page setup, and make sure that whatever paper size you have set is what you're actually going to be printing on. You know, and it's, if you're doing a custom size, you're going to need to go into properties, you're going to need to set it, you're going to need to set the margins and all the rest of it. Really get to know your own printer properties, because that's something that this is specific to whatever brand of printer that you have selected. Also, just as an aside, make sure that this type, what is written here, this is what driver's being used. If this says, for example, my Microsoft, generic, blah, 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 I can't remember what what it says, that's going to cause a problem with your reg marks being printed in the wrong, with the wrong spacing. So always make sure you have the correct driver installed. And if you don't, then go to that printer's website and download the latest driver and install it. And then that way you don't have to worry about the reg marks uh, being printed with the wrong spacing. Now you'll notice down here that what I discovered is that I'm getting awfully close to the print. Now, this is something else that with this freedom thing, you can have the cut lines because I'm not going to have those printed. I have those set to print plus cut, cut only. They can extend outside the printer margins because they're not being printed. All right. But I do need to make sure the, the print out, you know, the print shapes are you know, not outside the print margins. And they look like they're fine, but let's not take any chances, right? Because, you know, I've got this turned on so I can see where they're going to be. And I can do a control A to get my whole project. And I can just move it up just a little bit. That might be too much. Let me use the, on the position size, I'll just use these to kind of narrow it or just kind of scoot it down just a little bit. And now then when I check, it should be fine. Whoops, come over here and check. Now then I can see the print is clearly above this dashed line. And if I go to the top, it should be, it's, yeah, definitely, it's always getting close, but it's, it should, oh no, that's just the cut line, which is fine. It's, again, it's, I'm just looking at the print uh, margins and that's what I need to be concerned about. So, um, like I said, freedom, freedom, freedom. I love it. Also related to registration mark uh, settings is the ability to have intermediate registration marks with some of the cutters. 
And what intermediate registration marks, why they can be important is let's say I'm cutting, well, first of all, let's say this is a big sheet. Let's say it's a 13 by 19 sheet. Or <clears throat> let's say I'm cutting this from printable magnet where there's, you know, it's a much heavier material and you're more likely to have like um, some drifting <clears throat> during the cut. And you've seen what drifting is like. It's, you know, the first initial cut is perfect. And then as it keeps going row by row, it gets a little further off, a little further off until you end up and, you know, the the accuracy is is off too much. So is there a solution for that? Well, yes, there is. Under cutter, cutter settings, you can turn on use segment marks Y. And that's basically the, the setting for intermediate registration marks. And so then you can come in and put in your max step. Let's say you want to use four inches and then you click on save. And now then you'll see that you have these extra registration marks that have been added. <clears throat> and the way these are, will work, let's say with the camera, the camera will come and the camera will scan just the bottom four marks first and it will cut everything up to where that registration mark is located. Then it will scan the next set, the next four, and then finish cutting this and then cut all the way up to here and then, you know, and then finish with the, the last four. And that can be, again, really important for certain materials. Now, I kind of overdid it here on a letter size. I can't imagine ever needing more than maybe just one extra mark, but I wanted to put across the point that you can have, you know, as many as you want to based on whatever your project is or the material that you're cutting. My final favorite thing related to print and cut is the ability to export registration marks. And this is handy for people who want to print uh, from a different program. Let's say that they have, they want to use Adobe Illustrator, they want to use Affinity Designer because it supports color profiles. So you can do that. You can you know have your project set up here in your cuts a lot and go to File Export and then pick, I'm just going to overwrite uh, this one right here and click on save. And um, this, because of course I already tested this out. Um, and then make sure you mark this option, show registration marks. And typically 72 seems to be the DPI that works, although some programs it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna use 72. And then when I click on okay, it's going to save this file just as we see it here with the registration marks. And then over in, let's say, you know, Affinity Designer, which is the one that I use occasionally for printing, is I go to file place, and I locate uh, my file that I created. Here it is right here. I click on open. And then when I left click, and I just need to make sure it's centered on the page. So I come over here to the, the X and Y, and I just set those to zero and zero. And that puts that upper left corner, you know, right in the corner of the page area. And of course, I set my page area to match what I had in shortcuts a lot. And so then I can just print from here. Alternatively, you can, um, if you prefer to design an Illustrator or Affinity Designer or even Photoshop, this works in all of them, then you can do this. You can go ahead and, you know, design your program. And then back in your cuts a lot, um, you can have, you know, just basically just your registration marks that are turned on and do the same thing. Go to File, Export, and then uh, pick the, your file. Again, I'm just replacing one I've already tested. <clears throat> and then I make sure I have Show Registration Marks selected and again the resolution and click on OK. I can again use File, Place and then select just the registration mark file that I created. Okay, and then just click and then change the X and Y to be centered. That's very important is to make sure, you know, that you have it centered because when you get everything back over into uh, cuts a lot, you need to match up. So I designed it here. And so then I could just export all of this after printing, I export all of this as a PNG file. And then once I have it back over in, um, uh, sure cuts a lot. I won't need those registration marks anymore because you know sure cuts a lot has its own to use for the the process. And then just you know make sure you have the cut lines around the, these shapes here. Or if you're an Affinity Designer, you can add the cut lines here and then just export just the cut lines to have over there. It's just important to make sure you know your document area is always matched between the two and that you have things centered. Um, and I've got other detailed videos that go into specifically step by step how to do this. You know in case you ever want to use it. So this concludes the video on my favorite things print and cut. If you have any questions, please let me know.